first to start our afternoon will be Angela Beavers. And Angela is mentored by Dr. Yenzi, April Bailey, and Diane Twickler. And the title of Angela's presentation is MR of Fetal Neck and Face Masses, Prediction of High Morbidity Outcome, Including the XI. Come speak to us, Angela. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Um, and I'd like to thank my co-investigators, Dr. Yinzi, Dr. April Bailey, and Dr. Diane Twickler. Now, if I can get, there we go. A little bit of background. Uh, the exit is an abbreviation for ex utero intrapartum therapy procedure. It's a procedure used to establish an airway in fetuses with tracheal occlusion or obstruction. Uh, while the fetus remains on the utero placental circulation. So it's much more complex than a typical cesarean section. You have a large multidisciplinary team for the procedure. Both maternal and neonatal teams are present. And you have partial delivery of the fetus onto the maternal abdomen while an airway is being, uh, while the surgeon is accessing the airway. Uh, they infuse continuous warmed amnio infusion and they have tocolytics for uterine relaxation, all in an attempt to prevent the placenta from detaching so that the fetus can stay on the maternal circulation. At our institution, we have a multidisciplinary meeting to determine which patients should uh, be offered an exit procedure. The interpretation of the fetal MRI has had an effect on this decision-making process in the past, and historically, each case is assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. So this brought about the identification of a need to standardize and quantify the imaging parameters to better determine which patients should be offered an exit procedure. Here's an image from an exit procedure. You can see exactly how many physicians and ancillary staff are needed for such a complex procedure. And this is, there's partial delivery of the fetal head and neck in this case with uh, a large neck mass and uh, the physicians accessing the airway. So the purpose of our study was to identify and quantify the MR imaging parameters uh, in the setting of neck and face lesions, which predict high morbidity outcomes, including the need for an exit procedure. This was an IRB retrospective approved IRB study uh, of MRIs from 2004 to 2006 of patients with or fetuses with neck and face masses uh, with potential airway obstruction. I reviewed MRIs blinded to the patient outcomes and assessed for six parameters, which I'll go into a little more depth here shortly. One parameter we looked at was polyhydramnios, which is based typically on an ultrasound definition of greater than eight centimeters of amniotic fluid in the largest vertical pocket, uh, which is devoid of umbilical cord and fetal parts. In the case of MRI, you need to consider uh, maternal positioning because the patient may be left lateral decubitus for imaging, and then the images may be converted uh, before being sent to PACS. So in this case, here's the, how we would measure the largest vertical pocket in a patient with polyhydramnios. Next, we assessed for the presence of the epiglottic folds, which you can see both in the um, coronal or axial um, images on both of these patients. We also assessed for mass effect on the trachea, which we defined as lateral deviation of the trachea from the midline. Um, as defined by the spine. In this first, uh, the upper image, you can see the T2 hyperintense curvilinear structure, which is the trachea significantly deviated by that mass. We also assessed whether the mass uh, extended to midline. So some of these masses are more posterior or lateral. So we defined whether or not these masses extended all the way to midline. Uh, additionally, we looked at the size of the mass, both in the largest dimension and in a volume. Lastly, we looked at the morphology of the mass, which we graded on a five-point scale from completely cystic to the most complex 
which was greater than 50% solid. In this case, you have a completely cystic or a grade one lesion in this fetal neck. We divided our outcomes based on morbidity versus non-morbidity. Um, those morbidity cases were those which required an exit procedure, had difficult intubation at delivery, or had a lethal outcome. Those in the non-morbidity group were those that were able to return to their home institution for delivery. For our statistical analysis, we used a univariate analysis with Fisher's exact test and Wilcox and Rank sum test. And then we did multivariable lo logistic regression on the complete data set. We had 41 total MRIs. Uh, there was high morbidity in eight of those. So five required an exit procedure. One had a delivery which, at, after delivery, the patient required multiple intubation attempts. And one uh, patient with one fetus or which had demise within 12 hours of delivery and one intrauterine fetal demise. There was no morbidity in 33 of the cases or those patients with neck masses which were able to return to their home institution for delivery. This busy slide includes our results divided by morbidity and non-morbidity. We had multi multiple variables which reached statistical significance. So midline extension of the mass, mass effect on the trachea, the morphology of the mass, and the largest vertical pocket of amniotic fluid were all statistically significant uh, factors which could determine morbidity. Uh, while there was a trend towards significance with maximum dimension and volume, those did not reach statistical significance. And visualization of the area epiglottic folds also did not, was not found to be significant. This is in a receiver operator curve of the two most significant parameters, the largest vertical pocket of amniotic fluid and mass effect on the trachea, which yielded an area under the curve of 0 0.949 with a 95% confidence interval from 0 0.8795 to 1. And just a couple quick examples. Here's a patient with polyhydramnios, midline extension of a large neck mass with mass effect on the trachea, um, and the mass is predominantly solid. This patient required an exit procedure and tracheostomy at the time of the exit. This patient uh, is the one shown earlier in, in the presentation. There's a large neck mass, again, predominantly solid, uh, but there's only abutment of the trachea in this case. Um, and there is polyhydramnios present. This patient was also delivered with an exit procedure and was able to be intubated at that time. And this is an image post-delivery uh, with the endotracheal tube in place. So in conclusion, uh, two of our parameters, the largest vertical pocket and mass effect on the trachea, had provided an excellent model for prediction of high morbidity and potential airway obstruction. Um, and ultimately, our goal is to create a tracheal occlusion index so we can better assess uh, these MR imaging findings, which can predict which patients will most benefit from an exit procedure. We have a moment for a question or two, if you'd like to post something to Dr. Beavers. So, nice work, thank you. Did you do a multivariate analysis to see if so? I was wondering if you did a multivariate analysis to see if uh, a, a, several factors would create a greater risk factor than any one individual. Um, we did, on the full, on all of the variables. Ultimately, the best ROC curve was found to be with the largest vertical pocket of amniotic fluid and mass effect on the trachea. So, so those two parameters. We'd like to do a larger uh, and include all parameters so that we can, that's our goal, to create a tracheal occlusion index to plug in all of those numbers and better assess whether these patients would benefit from an exit. So morbidity was defined as those patients that either received an exit procedure, those that were delivered and had poor outcomes. Uh, so uh, one patient d had, f had uh, multiple, intubation, uh, multiple intubation attempts, I think it, 
16 minutes it took to get an airway at delivery. Um, so perhaps that patient should have had an exit procedure. And then one patient um, was, the mass was so large that they had uh, death within 12 hours of delivery. I mean, what I'm thinking is if, if someone followed them after six months or one year and see which patient does well versus which does not, and how was the mass size predictive of that? I mean, how big were the size when they had no morbidity? Like, was there a 10 centimeter mass with, with no morbidity? So we didn't really, we saw a trend towards statistical significance with the size of the mass, but m many of these masses were um, lymphatic malformations, and so they were more, I, just a theory, they're more pliable. So some of these masses were incredibly large, um, and that may have skewed that si slightly as to whether or not these patients were able to be delivered and have an airway accessed uh, without, without that compressing the airway, basically. Thank you.